All right, so this is me. I just wrote a book. It's called Broken Like Everybody Else, because you're going to get to see that I'm really broken, extremely broken. Uh, and my passion is actually talking to you guys. I wrote this book, if you think about it, to come talk to people like you, because I'm one of you. Um, so it's called Broken by, uh, like everybody else. It's, uh, it's, my, it's my life story. Um, so the idea here is to get you guys thinking about stuff that probably you haven't heard or maybe don't, some people don't like talking about. Because I'm like you, I don't mind talking about them. I'm not afraid. So I'm going to make some pretty crazy statements. College Joe equals crack dealer. And you go, what? I say to the same person. Right? How? Preppy college Joe? Crack dealer? Well, it's interesting because a whole bunch of college Joes and crack dealers end up exactly in the same place. One of two destinations that we all know so well. In jail and dead. And you're probably thinking, what's this white-haired dude talking about? I know, because I was both. I was both a college student, then dropout, then drug abuser, then drug dealer, and yet, here I am. I somehow managed to make it across the river. Here I am. And no, I did not end up there, clearly. Um, but yet I'm broken. I'm broken like everybody else. So that's, that's really the theme of this whole thing, is so that you all don't feel that being broken is something terrible or something that's unique to you or you invented it. It feels like it. It's not. God, I got news for you. I'm really broken. And I'm going to share how broken I am. I don't have any problem with it. So here, here's, here's, here's a, a, some breaking news. So I lived a whole life thinking that the more toys you got, the happier you're going to be. And you know what, guys? I crushed it. I had everything. I worked my ass off, but I had everything. The boats, the cars, the Rolexes. I still have a couple of fancy things. I still have a Rolex. But um, that's some, they told me that's what life was supposed to be like. Happiness equals stuff. So rush and get stuff. Ironically, the stuff that I managed to get when I was a bad guy, that one didn't last at all. But the stuff that I managed to get working legally as I do now and have in the last almost 40 years, that one lasted, but, but it had some issues too. I mean, look at this, look at this thought. I mean, have you guys heard of this before? He, he or she who dies with the most toys wins? I mean, come on, really? It's like we're gonna live a lifetime just lobbing on toys on top of toys? You know, when's enough? Um, Something weird was happening to me uh, that the more stuff I managed to get, <laughs> the unhappier I became. I was freaking miserable. Um, up until last year, I lived in Miami, Florida, and uh, where I spent the last 32 years of my life. I'm a Cuba Rican. I'm born in Cuba, raised in Puerto Rico, but I'm really a Miamian because really Miami became uh, our home and um, managed to have this crazy cool career in this industry called Spanish language television and I was lucky. I crushed it. I did really, really well, but somehow the, the more successful I got, the more, am I allowed to say one or two curse words? Okay, the more shit I got, the, 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 the less I was happy. It was really weird. It was counterintuitive. 
uh, in the boat, in the condo, in the this, in the travel, in the trips. But it, it, nothing was going on. It was, it was actually backwards. I was becoming miserable. So <laughs> that's precisely the feeling. Now what? Right? After they sold me that bill of goods. Work hard, get stuff, get stuff in bigger homes and more things. And, blah, 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 and yet it wasn't working for me. Uh, so I did what most lost people do. As a good explorer, I said, okay, I don't know what's going on, but this is not good. So I'm going to back, you know, backtrack my steps, <laughs> like, like getting lost in the woods. And I went back to college last year. I was one of you, hanging around in the University of Florida, where almost 40 years ago, I had dropped out. Dig that. I dropped out as a senior in the University of Florida in 1980, as a senior, I mean, this close. Just said, eh, I don't want to do this. This is for the birds. Selling drugs wasn't my fun. Um, certainly more profitable. Uh, and I bailed, and I had this magnificent career in that very same field, advertising. But it was somehow felt weird. It felt like maybe I have some unfinished business in Gainesville, Florida. So I sold all my stuff in Miami, packed up my family. My wife and I moved to Gainesville, Florida, some little town. And I re-enrolled at the University of Florida last fall. So a year ago today, you would have seen me wherever my backpack is, with that little backpack riding a bike. This is an executive that, had, that has run multi-million dollar companies and sold companies and done all kinds of funny things. There I was, back in college. Um, I figured that maybe if I got a degree and I'd finish that, maybe I could start backtracking my steps and saying, will I be happy? So I, I went to Gainesville just to find some answers because I was an unhappy camper and it was perfectly illogical. At all this, side note, at all this, I didn't have a clue that I was broken whatsoever. I kind of chalked off. I was Superman. I chalked off any and all issues in my childhood or in my growing up as, eh, whatever. I got over it. Well, Surprise, surprise, Gainesville, Florida is university, actually UF, is a research university. And what this means is they love testing. They have more, <laughs> more, more brainiacs in Gainesville, Florida than I, I don't know what, but they love testing things. So as I was there as an undergrad, 59-year-old undergraduate student, could you imagine that picture? If all of a sudden I sit next to you in a classroom, you're going to go, dude, What's my dad doing in this classroom? That was me. Uh, and the last thing I expected was, hey, let's test you. Because I was starting to have some issues, some actually funky issues with my work. I, had, I was enrolled in four classes. Two of them, I was killing it. Two of them that were like auditoriums, I was getting straight A's. I was a rock star in that class. Two. One of them was a math course, actually a statistics course, and the other one was a, like a writing course. Ugh, I was having all kinds of trouble. And I figured, I can, I can power through this. I can power through everything. I'm Godzilla. Um, but I couldn't. And that led me to, long story short, is led me to, let's go get tested. And they first they found ADHD. You guys know what ADHD is? How many of you have ADHD? Some of you, fine. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pain. And by the way, it never, it, ne it kind of never shows up all, all by itself. What a concept. It has little traveling companions. So when testing me for ADHD, they found I was dyslexic. What? Yeah, I was changing words and symbols and numbers. I was doing all kinds of weird stuff. And while doing that, they tested me for my handwriting. Any of you have wonderful handwriting? Because I can't understand a thing I write. Actually, George deserves a medal. George is my business partner here in Orlando, and 
I don't know how he has actually learned how to decipher the, 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 the Egyptian that I write because it's, it's just, it scribbles. Um, the handwriting was connected. My motor skills, I had my handwriting, my handwriting is disconnected to my thinking process. So I found that. So learning disabled to no extent. Boom. So, wow. This sucks. <laughs> Here goes that plan. So that, that, so much, so much for the plan of, of getting my degree and becoming a professor here and becoming a teacher. Oh, I could teach, all right. The kids love me. I know my stuff backwards and forwards, the media stuff. I'm really good at it. But I don't have a degree, so I, they, I can't teach. So I said, the plan's gone to hell. And then, was, then the next shoe was about to drop. Um, you guys are a part of an organization called uh, CBC, correct? CBC. Well, the sister company of CBC, Gainesville, is called Partnership for Strong Family. Same, same type of setup, okay? So I was on the board of directors of that. And not for any particular reason. I just wanted to be involved in my community. Little did I know what was coming next. Do you all know what an ACE test is? You do? Okay, well, adverse childhood experiences. Well, as a board member, I was sitting on a board of directors meeting with my suit and tie and all that stuff, and uh, they, the, the chief executive hands, hands, hands us an ACE test and says, hey, check it out. We're testing the population because this study connects childhood trauma with health. And since we have to manage the health and the, you know, the kids and that, we're, we need to see the trauma levels. So, of course, Curious George takes the test. And I score a wonderful 9 out of 10 aces. And they go, what? Uh, the CEO turns me back, turns around and says, Joe, nines don't exist. You ought to be dead. Um, go back and take that test. It's impossible. I go back. Yep, nine, nine aces. I said, oh boy. How's your health? <laughs> that was his first thought. But they found that I was extremely broken now on that side too. And that's when I actually connected them both. And, then, and this, was, this is what this presentation is really about. How trauma in your childhood can and sometimes will connect to your, your learning abilities. And then we're going to talk about, because this is not about bumming you out. It's about, it's about how to beat it and how to get on with your life. Um, so how broken was I? There it is. 100% ADHD. I can actually comprehend. What, what a concept. I can comprehend 28% of what I read. How about that? So you give me 100 words, I can comprehend 28% of them. I can recite them back. So if you give me a test, I will always fail. That sucks. There goes, there goes that for that learning. But on the same test, they found out that I can comprehend 180% of what I listen to. I go, dude, I'm a bat. So, so, so I, I like walk into a room and I record everything. Well, clearly, because if I can't read and learn reading, I have to learn somehow. I need to survive somehow. So apparently I'm a recorder. So, I, so disabilities are connected to super abilities and we're going to go there. Because you know, when you're going to find some disabilities, you're going to find that there's, they have next door neighbors that are called super abilities. I was dyslexic, I have motor skills, and like I said, 9 out of 10 aces. Actually, and I don't mind, if you guys want me to skip through this, I will, but I don't mind putting it out there so you know I'm not a BS artist. This is me, okay? All of it, Phys physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, hungry, divorce, abandonment, my mother was a junkie, everything. Everything, with one exception, for some strange reason, they didn't incarcerate anybody in my in my immediate family. But everything else, I got I got lots of those, and that led me to say, wait a minute, now what? So again, with nine out of ten, I was supposed to be in jail or dead. Actually, more than likely dead but in the very least in jail. So how about that, right? Um, but yet here I am. I'm the guy that lives to tell the story, 
well then what's my responsibility? My responsibility is to meet with people like you and say, hey, if, if I got over my stuff and you saw all my stuff, <laughs> and I made it across the river, and here I am as I stand here, own a business, you know, done real well, I mean, married for 38 years with the same woman, have three children, never been, never been arrested, how about that? I mean, I'm not saying that, I'm saying that with pride that I got away with it. I just, I'm that lucky. But I live to tell the story. So the question is, how, so, this, because it's, up until now, this stuff is kind of inexplicable, right? So how can you be broken? How can you have this super turbulent past? How can you have all these learning disabilities? How can you have all the strikes against you? Everything. And still be this person that lives in, well now I live, the last, I moved here three months ago, so I live in Winter Park, Florida, in this nice neighborhood, <laughs> and I'm a tax-paying citizen, I, my, na my neighbors are doctors and lawyers. I'm not, clearly. Um, well, because here's some, just some information that may be helpful. It's just a fact. So when you find your weaknesses and your disabilities, um, they're completely connected to your super abilities. And I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk you through some crazy stuff, right? So it all, I'm convinced that it starts with trauma. And by the way, I did a lot of research for this book. Starts with trauma. Trauma that leads to disabilities that then lead to super abilities. My case, everything that could possibly happen to a minor happened to me, they broke me. They freaking broke me, okay? That's just a fact. And then now, but now I have this learning, I'm a bat, I record. I'm a walking recording machine and I'm a supersonic salesman, which is awesome. Same thing goes for trauma that leads to fearlessness. I mean, don't you find yourself sometimes thinking that you're, I should be afraid of this? I was. I was in a crack dealer. We were bringing in airplanes, okay, from Colombia, we, with machine guns and stuff. No, no, no. This is the, out of the movies. And yet, I was like there, and I said, "Weren't you scared?" No, nope. <laughs> I didn't even know it was. I was supposed to be scared. Well, I mean, my own mother tried killing me a thousand times, so uh, that was scarier. So trauma and fearlessness. Now gave me a new superpower. In the life of business, I get into business adventures, and they go, my God, it can fail. Really? Is that all? Because please tell me something scarier. Because, okay, so, so it fails. So what? I didn't die. Nobody killed me. Nobody stabbed me while I was at it. So it's no big deal. It's a super ability. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to think that your, your, your being broken can actually be a superpower. Um, so all of this is cute until, unless I share with you how. So what's in it for me? Which is, by the way, a really good question, guys. You should be asking yourselves anytime you meet anyone at any time. What's in it for me? So one is, what's in it for me? I'm going to share with you four steps that I think would be helpful for any of you. The first one is called find your picture. Okay? That's my picture. That means a picture in your mind. It doesn't, if you have one, it's cool, but if you don't, it's okay. In your mind. Of the darkest, scariest memory possible. Can you? In your head? Okay. I see some nods. That's mine. By the way, I was 12. They raped me. That, is that bad enough? 12. That's a boy. Yep. In boarding school. Those wonderful folks in boarding school. Um, so find that picture. So that's, you find your own. First, use it. Use that picture as context. Because you know what this is, guys? That's ground zero. Nothing, nothing will ever be harder. So, so that's, that, that's, that's a good thing. Start with saying, this is the scariest moment. And then anything, anytime you find something's hard or something scary, put it up against that picture and say, is it this hard? Is it this scary? I promise you, at least I do it every day. Nah, of course not. 
Nothing will be the, ever be this hard or this scary. So it gives you, gives you a, fr a frame of reference, knowing that nothing will be that scary. And the other thing, which is you have to also have some self-love and know that that picture, it's not your freaking fault, okay? Somebody else was even probably more broken, and they hurt you. Step number two, so step number one, find your picture. Step number two, you got to change the questions. We go through lives asking, why? Why did this happen to me? Why did they beat me up? Why did this break? Why did this? Why, 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 why? For whiners, why? You know what's wrong with why? It's garbage. It only gives you an explanation of the past. Why is like looking at the rear mirror? What do we gain with why? It's just a freaking explanation, right? Why? Why did my mother beat me? I don't know. Because um, she was sick. Um, there's no gain. There's nothing to carry. There's nothing to take with you with the answer of why. It just gives you an answer. The better question is what for? That's different. Because why is one thing. It just explains. What for is something that may be a little bigger. Because it gives you, first, hope. Jesus, if you can think that what for gives you hope that every moment, every single thing that happens to you has a meaning and it has a purpose, I'll give you, I'll give you an idea. I'll give you an example of how that what for works for me. When writing this book, I felt miserable because I had to relive my traumas. And then I said, what, you know, what am I doing this for? You know what, guys? If it was only to come here today to talk to you, that was good enough what for for me. So just to share my story with others that might be in, in roads that look alike. So it gives you hope. You can take the what for. It, you can take it somewhere. However, however, big caveat, the what for in a question only works on your faith. You have to, you have to believe that it that, that there is a purpose and a reason. So when the darkest things are happening to you, you have to believe that there's a reason. Uh, the catch is most of the time, while the bad stuff is going on, and you're saying, fine, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that weird white-haired white, white guy that came talk to us, and I'll try to change the question from why to what for, what for? The answer is not going to be there. You have to wait. You have to wait it out. So that, that's where faith comes in. Faith. And you're not going to hear me, you know, preaching because I'm not a preacher. Um, three is find your disabilities and you'll find your super abilities. And you go, how do I do that? I'll share with you mine. My disability, poor reading comprehension. My super ability, bat. <laughs> Batman. Uh, another disability, trouble maintaining focus. Super ability, I'm a super salesperson. I communicate. I'm socially retracted. My super ability, I'm super compassionate. So when you find broken pieces to you, and only you know where those broken pieces are, please know that there's the other part. So there's a disability, and then next door, next door, there's a super ability. The problem is our society and, and the system around us doesn't talk to us much about this. So I want you to believe this. This is the third one. Yes, you have to believe. The fourth one, yeah, the broken ones, we are the strong ones. Um, we can change our stars. Look at me, guys. If I am not dead and in jail, it's a miracle, then that, that means you can make it through the river as well. However, it's going to be up to you. You have to make it happen. Um, words of wisdom. You know, when you ha this is from an old song, when you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. It's really weird because even at this stage of my life, I act this way, and I have lots to lose. But I seem to act like I have nothing to lose. So therefore, I'm always going for it. And that's a good thing. Don't be afraid. Go for it. And adversity is food. Stay hungry. Do you guys know what adversity means? Basically, bad shit. You can count on it. Count on it, please do. Mark it on your calendars. It's coming. So know it. It's all right. Bring it. Bring it because you can go through it. 
As long as you know it, that it's coming, bring it, because it's, it's going to come. But by now, I'm getting to a point where I just go, oh, great. Here, come, here comes the bad shit again. I go, bring it. Bring it. You know, here's my, here's my feel good slide. Sure, nobody can go back and make a, you know, start again. But the truth is that anybody can actually make and draw a new ending to the movie. We can't, we can't, we can't, you know, put the pace back in the tube and, get, and say, I don't like that hand, give me another hand. Nope. They gave us a hand. We got to play that one out. But if we pony up, we cowboy up and we play the hand we've been given, we can change the ending. Here's, here's just food for thought. Uh, you guys know that in Japan, broken, broken uh, uh, jars, uh, they, fill, they fill the broken parts with gold. How about that? Right? It's kind of cool if you think about it. So broken, broken objects, they pour gold into it and then then they become super, super important, super beautiful. So to me, there's a, there's an, a nice message in the fact that broken parts can be filled with gold. And I want to end with just showing you a little song. It's a lullaby, you know. So please try not to fall asleep. We're done. This presentation's over.
We are all Japanese Poles, guys. We are all broken. We're filled with gold. Problem is they don't, we don't know it. They don't tell us enough. So you just have to believe it and, and move forward in life knowing that it ends. It does. It gets better. It can get better. You, you will make it better. Um, this is my book. Um, you can follow us you know, on Facebook, social media, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. We're having crazy, raging success on finding people from all over the world. All of the unlikeliest of places, the Arab countries, South America, Brazil, all over, that are broken. So, thank you so much. Um, I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. <laughs>